Windows 10 is an excellent operating system, but it too isn't without its limitations. And as an OS for gaming, it's pretty decent, with DX12 improved functionality and things like that as a big plus, at least over 8, 8.1 and somewhat Windows 7. Harvesting your data isn't so fantastic though, so let's fix that. Greetings everyone, my name is Proto and in today's video I'll be taking you through a step-by-step -step process of optimizing Windows by locking it down, enabling better functionality, and making it perform better in regards to boot times, games, and well, general use really. If you're new to the series, I highly recommend that you check out the last few episodes, but that said, this series is practically a step-by-step -step guide to easy transition into PC gaming and how to get the best experience from it. With that over, onto the disclaimer. This episode features the use of tools and tweaks that involve changing the registry and system files. And whilst I have performed all of these tweaks on multiple systems, including the one that you'll see in a minute, I will not be held responsible if you mess up your operating system or damage something. Again, I've performed these tweaks on my own personal PC as well, with no problems, but you will have to use some common sense as always. So let's start by installing the key programs that you should have on your system. These are things like a better browser, media player, antivirus, MS Office Alternative, free one, and some other tools. And whilst not 100% necessary, these will improve your experience in Windows right off the bat. So let's start by opening Microsoft Edge and typing in Ninite. Click on the first option. Now Ninite is basically a website that compiles commonly used applications that are good when starting out. It contains the newest versions of programs and you can decide what you want to include. Because I'm not happy with Edge and the privacy concerns, either select Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Both are good. I use both on my system, but I do prefer the speed of Chrome. These are your web browsers where you can Google and search for pretty much anything. In this video, you can see that I don't want to go for Skype, though that is up to you. In another episode, I'll go over other programs which are much better than Skype because they don't suffer from the same P2P connections which leak your IP extremely easily. In media, I'm going to select VLC and K-Lite codecs. These are very similar to the Windows Media Player, except from that they support a broader range of file types and codecs, and practically come with more features, customization, and better ease of use. In Documents, you will want to go for a PDF Reader, and whilst you can use Adobe PDF Reader, Foxit Reader is just as good. For the next bit, either select LibreOffice or OpenOffice. These are your free alternatives to Microsoft Office, and still give you access to a bunch of great functionality in word processing, creating spreadsheets, and PowerPoints. I've tried both and due to me using Linux, Ubuntu more specifically, on my laptop, I just prefer LibreOffice, but do try them both if you're up for it. After this, we're going to be installing some security suite. Now, there's no reason to go balls to the wall and buy 10 different antivirus and anti-malware software, since chances are they either don't work well together and end up just slowing down your system or it's just completely unnecessary. The best protection against malware is common sense. On my system, I use a vast and malware bytes, which I've noticed do a good enough job. They're also lightweight enough not to bog down your system that much compared to something like Norton Antivirus. These are great. In developer tools, I'm going to select Notepad++, and this is essentially a really extensive and feature-rich version of Notepad. This will make it easier to edit any files for games, if it ever does come to that, like it did for Arkham Knight, or say your host files to block telemetry and stop connecting to unwanted IPs. I am going to skip Steam for now, since I will be going over installing all the different game software and DRMs and all that jazz in a later episode, as well as getting games, running them, etc. But move on to compression for now, and choose either WinBar or 7-Zip, and then click Get Your Ninite. After that, either click on the icon at the bottom right, or click on the Windows Explorer on Taskbar, followed by Downloads. After that, you should see the Ninite bundle we just downloaded. Double click on it, click Yes, and let the installer run. This will take some time. After that, just click close. Next, download the pack in the description of this video and you should see a zip file. Right click on it and extract it to the desktop. Now right click on that file we just extracted and click on merge. Click yes, yes and ok. And this basically changes the registry key that allows you to use the Windows Picture Viewer that you got in older versions as opposed to the shitty one they've just introduced with Windows 10. You can see this here where it normally just opens up this program and as you'll see it will now load the Windows Photo Viewer. To make this a default application, go into the Windows icon at the bottom left and type in Control Panel. Hit Enter. After this go into the Programs, then Default Programs, 
and then finally set your default programs. After this scroll down to Windows Photo Viewer and select the option that says set this program as default. Click OK and close that window. This means that if you open any picture or anything along those lines with JPEG or PNG, it'll always use the regular Windows Photo Viewer. And now to lock down Windows starting with the regular settings. Go into the bottom left of the display and click on the Windows icon or just the Windows key. Type in settings and click enter. Now from there go into system and default apps. Change this to the programs you downloaded earlier off of Ninai. So for the video player select VLC, for the music player also select VLC and from the web browser select Google Chrome. This means that these programs will be chosen as the default ones for any associated file types like if you open an mp3 file which is obviously used for things like music and audio it will open up VLC instead of whatever crap they've put on there like Groove Music. Another example is if you're watching a movie with the mp4 container it will open in VLC as it's playing a video. Next we'll go into notifications and actions and turn all of them off but the first one. Notifications are the things that you see in the bottom right of the screen by the taskbar and they're pretty pointless and annoying. This disables most of them but the important ones which believe me there aren't that many. Under get notifications from these centers, this is where I've left them enabled, which FYI, these are only notifications. Next, go into power and sleep and change the sleep option to never. This means that whilst the screen may turn off when you're not using your PC, your PC itself won't. Now we're going to change the power settings. So click on advanced power settings and either select balanced, which is what I'm using, or if you're running really demanding applications all the time, select high performance. High performance basically unparks all of the cores, making them run at the highest frequency they're allowed to. In gaming, you shouldn't really see a difference between balanced and high performance because Windows manages that automatically, but if you see low FPS, try setting it to high performance. I leave mine unbalanced though, as I've just said, and after that, just click close on that tab and go back into settings. Now go into devices, click on the mouse and touchpad, and then additional mouse options. Go to the pointer options and on check, enhanced pointer precision. This is the dreaded mouse acceleration which speeds up your movement of your mouse as you keep moving the cursor. It's basically exponential movement. The problem with that is, is that it does make you less accurate in games and mitigates any chance of you being able to develop muscle memory. So just turn that crap off. Click apply and OK. Lastly in devices we're going to go into autoplay. Autoplay opens up the Windows Explorer when you plug a disk in or a USB drive in. And the problem with that is that if you plug in an affected or malicious drive into your PC and it runs a script that messes up your computer, you're fucked if your PC doesn't protect you from it. Turning this setting off means that to access the drive you'll just have to open File Explorer manually when using the drive and there you go, problem solved. Back into settings, go into network and internet and from there go into Wi-Fi and make sure that settings such as Wi-Fi Sense are disabled if they aren't already. It's not as bad as it used to be but in regards to sharing network information with other accounts, it's a massive security flaw that was supposed to make Windows easier to use, but instead, this just connects you to hotspots that are open. Again, we want full control, so the one I want to automatically connect to is my own home network. Go back into settings and head into accounts. In the Your Info tab, you should be able to see one or more options. Now, option one is a local account, which is what you want to have, and the other is an account linked to your email address. If you've got one that's linked to your email, all you need to do to turn it into a local account is to click the unlink account and create a local account in Windows. It should only be a couple of clicks. As for why you'd want a local account is because it's more secure, private, works regardless of internet and doesn't require you to use the same password as your email address. Seriously, just turn that account into a local one if you haven't already. I don't want my account to sync and tell Microsoft of absolutely everything I do. So going for a local one is way better to control your system. Go into settings again and into ease of access. We're going to want to change a few things. Under narrator, turn everything off and then head into keyboard. We're going to make sure that all the options are disabled, none of that funny business, and then go into other. Here we're going to disable play animations in Windows, which will make the PC feel much more responsive and doesn't have to bother with the funky in and out animations, which IMO look clunky. Back to the settings, we're going to go to privacy, disable everything, absolutely fucking everything. I don't want apps to access personal info, so just turn that off in general. Rinse and repeat this for all the other sections, disabling them in location simply means that apps themselves can't access your location and you can't set it manually either. 
This isn't a bad thing though, so don't worry about it. And camera, I don't want apps to access it without me knowing. And the same thing applies to microphone. If I want an app to access the microphone, I'll just enable it in its specific settings. Like for example, OBS, you can just select the mic. And not shit like Edge or Photos. It's just unnecessary and invasive. And the notifications do the sibs, so we really don't care about getting them from the action center. For speech, inking, and typing, I'd rather not tell Windows any more about me than they need to know. Under account info, I don't want apps to access my name and account info, so again, just make sure that's disabled. Contacts, calendar, call history, email, messaging, and radio can all be disabled, so don't bother with it. This is a work PC, or at least one that doesn't need this. Don't even bother leaving it enabled. In other devices, turn off sync, and then head into the feedback and diagnostics. The aim of this is that we want Microsoft to gather little to no data from this machine and to have a better experience. Setting ask for feedback to never means that we won't get these annoying we'd like to know what you think of Windows messages and setting send your device data to Microsoft to basic means that we won't be sending as much data as we would otherwise be. Trust Microsoft to recommend setting this to full. Yeah, no. You can change this to nothing in the registry files if you do have an enterprise account but we will solve this issue in a minute anyway. And lastly, in background apps, turn everything off. These are all just consuming your RAM, making Windows take longer to boot fully, and just waste system resources on this crap. You don't need them, and you won't miss them. To some extent, I can understand things like photos running, but shitty mobile games on my PC? Absolutely not. I know Microsoft received a huge paycheck for these games to be bundled with Windows, but damn it, I don't want Candy Crush, Royal Revolt, or any of the crap loading when I don't want it to. After checking that everything's been properly disabled, go into settings one last time, and then go into the update and security setting. In Windows options under update settings, click on advanced options. Now click on choose how updates are delivered, and turn it off. This prevents you from downloading Windows updates from other computers, on your home network, or even from other people just randomly on the internet. Trust me, this eats away at your bandwidth, and it's fine, I'll just download all of my files directly from Microsoft, no worries there. Next we're going to be using a couple of different software known as Ultimate Windows Tweaker and Spybot Anti-Beacon. Download both from their respective websites, and for sake of demonstration I've just put them on my desktop. Right click on the zip file and extract. Open the folder and find Ultimate Windows Tweaker, the application, which is the .exe. Right click on it and run as administrator. This means that it will get access to your system entirely, and allows it to change some settings and the registry. If you're concerned about viruses, don't be, it's clean, but if you're really that paranoid, just do a virus scan with Avast or um, Malwarebytes. Click yes and OK, and then OK again. And whilst it should have created a restore point, be careful not to mess with the settings that you don't actually understand. As you can see, it has a plethora of different settings which you can alter. From customization to additional settings, just head into security and privacy. In the security tab, disable OneDrive, you don't need it, and check turn off user tracking for obvious reasons. Click apply tweaks. Head into the privacy tab and go through each setting manually, but I found that none of them were actually worth keeping enabled on Windows or unchecked. These settings change a list of things we've already done and a lot more, such as disabling update sharing, to other things such as disabling Cortana and telemetry. Now telemetry is an automated process, where data is collected from the user and transmitted back to the parent, in this case Microsoft, who uses it for the purpose of measuring, monitoring and improving services. It's used by Microsoft to provide, improve and personalize experiences, using those terms loosely, and obviously for security analysis. That said, nothing is stopping them from sharing telemetry, or the data at least, with third parties. This is a naughty one and is a primary concern of our privacy, so just disable that, and after that just click on apply tweaks, and close UWT. Once Spybot Anti-Beacon is downloaded, you'll want to run the executable file. Because I want it to stay on the system so I can conveniently re-enable it after updates, I'm just going to choose to install it. If like Ultimate Windows Tweaker, you don't want to install it, download the portable version off the website. After installing it or running the executable file, we're going to solve a lot of the telemetry and Windows, in case Ultimate Windows Tweaker missed it. In the protection tab, immunize everything. This will add some lines to the Windows host file and just change some registry values, meaning that we're locking down Windows and making sure it can't send all of this information to Microsoft. In the optional tab, we're going to block all of them, but the ones we want to use. 
If you're planning to use OneDrive, don't block that. And the same goes for Bing. In my opinion, most of the people can just block absolutely everything, since the only reason that I use Bing is because it's superior for searching images, with a bunch of filters for high transparency and the rest, but again, that's up to you. You can certainly copy my settings if you want. Again though, what we're blocking here is telemetry. After that, just close Spybot Anti Beacon. As for the next point, we're going to delete all of the bloatware that comes with Windows. What I'm talking about is all of the Metro apps and all of the other BS that will not allow you to delete in programs and features. There's a couple of ways you can do this, with mine being the easiest, but you should notice it gets rid of all the crap, like absolutely everything, from pre-installed mobile games to calendar, camera, calculator, and those apps, as well as the Xbox app and the store app. Generally speaking, when you're playing games on PC, most tend to purchase games from DRM such as Steam, Origin, and even Uplay, or GOG. Rarely have I ever seen exclusive games on the Windows Store that are actually worth getting. There are games you can purchase on the Windows Store such as Gears of War and so on, but the Windows Store hasn't been off to a good start where there's non-tweakable files and so on. So unless you really want to play these games, which mind you could certainly come to Steam anyway like Quantum Break did, by all means get rid of it. I have and I certainly don't regret my decision. So go to the Windows icon or click on the Windows key and type PowerShell. After it comes up with the correct option, right click on it and select Run as Administrator. This will give it permission to delete the bloatware that comes bundled with Windows. Type this command into the command line being get hyphen appx package space hyphen all users space then that vertical bar space remove hyphen appx package. I do believe that capitalization and case matters so just copy it as I've got here but again it will be down in the description. Essentially what this command is saying is is get all the pre-installed software basically all the crapware and bloatware and find it for all current users on windows. Now delete it, which is the remove hyphen appx package. You should see it run a bunch of lines and probably a bunch of red errors. Like, a lot of green lines, a lot of red lines. Leave it for a few minutes, this is completely normal. And on the contrary to what it's saying, it has actually removed apps like Xbox, even though it says it can't and it won't. Once that's done, click on Windows and you can see that the majority of crap has been removed or it's just disappeared. Good stuff. For things like Netflix, just right click on it and choose unpin from start. Then drag the site inwards and it should also now be more compact. In terms of making File Explorer easier to use and manage, open File Explorer and click on the View tab at the top. This should give you some more options and then check File Name Extensions. What this does is it tells you the end of the file name without having to fumble about in the properties just to see it. This is especially useful if you think you're opening a picture and it's actually an executable file containing a virus for example. If you download a thing from the internet saying cats.jpg, you might think you're alright because it has the jpeg picture file extension. Enabling this could show you that the file is actually named something like cats.jpg.exe, which is a different story. Again, it's really unlikely but it just makes it easier for you to manage your system if you know whether you're clicking on executable or something else. If you then click on options and click on change folder and search options, you can change file explorer to open on this PC instead of the quick access windows, making your life easier when you need to find your files on your drives. Also make sure you uncheck both of these options in privacy as commonly used files and recently used files won't show up anymore. This is a preference but I can't stand it and after that just click apply and ok. The next thing we're going to look into is a startup item, so go into the windows icon and click on it, which you're probably used to by now. Start typing in task manager and press enter. What you're now seeing is a window of all the active programs and basically every service and application running on the system. You can check and monitor CPU, RAM, drive and network usage of all individual programs and end the application forcefully. Go into startup and you'll see a list of programs that start running when Windows loads up. Disabling the ones you don't need can significantly speed up boot times, which is the time it takes for Windows to load on startup or when you press the power button on your PC. For me, the only thing I don't want to start automatically is OneDrive. If I click disable, you can see that under status of that application, it is actually disabled from running on startup. For the next section, we're going to be making sure that Windows feels much more responsive and marginally reduced system load. Start by going to the control panel and from here go into system and security. Then go into system and then advanced system setting. Head into the remote tab and turn off allow remote assistance 
as well as make sure that don't allow remote connections to this computer is selected. This is more to do with the fact that you won't get Microsoft technicians or any other person connect to your PC. It's not a big deal, but I know I won't use it. And the next thing to do is head into the advanced tab and click on performance options. This will give you a list of all the things you can enable such as animations and all the rest. I know they're annoying and a waste of time. I tend to have the best results with disabling all of them, but the show thumbnails instead of icons, show windows contents while dragging, and lastly, smooth edges of screen fonts. These are your third, fifth, and seventh options from the bottom. Click apply, and from here you can change the ID of your system. Many of the different punctuation and things like spaces and other special characters aren't allowed, so just make sure that you fall within those guidelines if you're looking to personalize it more. I'm starting to lose my voice here, but bear with me. For a cleaner taskbar, go back into desktop and right click on taskbar. Go up to search and either go on show search icon or hidden. For the most part, there's no need to use it and hidden certainly gives you a cleaner look. Also, I don't use the multiple desktop feature on Windows, but you might. If you do, then don't bother changing this, but under show task view button, if you click on that, you can hide it if you don't plan on using it. This next step is if you own an NVIDIA GPU, whilst not on all of the systems, there does seem to be a bug-like problem. Basically, whilst your FPS seems high or consistent, let's say at 60, your actions in-game are sluggish and look more like you're running at 20 FPS, making the game impossible to play. Start by heading into the NVIDIA control panel by right-clicking on your desktop and then going on NVIDIA control panel. Wait for it to load. For me, this always takes fucking forever. And then head into the manage 3D settings. Right here, you'll be presented with a bunch of options that is forcing, anti-aliasing in games, and more. Scroll down until you find Manage Pre-Rendered Frames. Change this to 1. Trust me, it makes a world of a difference. Next, go into the Motion Display Mixed GPU Acceleration, and set that to Single Display Performance Mode. Wait a little, and click on the preferred fresh rate setting, and make sure that it's set to the highest available. After this, there's only one last thing to do, which is Enable God Mode in Windows. Go to the desktop and right click on it, hover over the create new folder selection and select that. After that, right click on the folder and you should be given the option to rename it. Then copy paste it. After that, it should be titled God Mode. You can change this to whatever you want, like Gaben Mode or whatever. But if you open it now, it should give you an insane amount of options. From admin tools to backup to mouse, network and more. Now I'm not going to sit here and oversell it. A lot of these features you can just find the control panel, but the difference is that this is a dedicated folder just for that and lets you see all the control panel features in one place. There's no need to keep going back and forth, this is simple and quick. As always, my name is Proto and you've been watching episode 4 of Getting Into PC Gaming. If you've enjoyed this video then be sure to give it a like and now is a really good time to subscribe, if you haven't already. If there's anything you want to talk about or need help getting your system off the ground, either leave a comment or tweet at me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Back from the dead.